Okay, so welcome to this next video in the theory of probability, and we're going to continue our study of the multinomial distribution, and in this video what we're going to do is we're going to uh, just explore conditional probability uh, and the multinomial distribution. So this video is on uh, conditional probability and the multinomial. Conditional probability, oh come on, and the multinomial. Uh, I'll just leave it, oh no, I'll finish it, multinomial, we're there now, excellent, right, that's why I don't usually write titles. Okay, uh, so, uh, let's just have a quick reminder of the setup, we have our K baskets and we have N tennis balls, so here are our K baskets, 1 through K, 2K, and we have some probability vector P1, P2, up to PK which tells us the probability that an individual tennis ball uh, will go into uh, the uh, whichever basket it is, pi. So we know that this vector x uh, is multinomially distributed uh, with a uh, number of baskets k, a number of trials n, and this p vector p. Okay, so what we now want to ask is if I know how many of the balls go into a certain basket, let's say I know um, Okay, so what shall I ask? Let's say I want to know the probability that x, this x vector is equal to some specific little vector, let's say x1, x2, all the way through to xk, so these are little x's, uh, and I want to know that conditional on x, big x1 already equaling little x1. So I'm saying I already know that little x1, uh, that little, uh, that big x1 is equal to this little x1. So I'm saying this event has happened. Now what is the probability of this happening? I'm asking for the conditional probability. Let's ask what that is. And of course if we do work out what this is, uh, we can do it for any of the um, x1, x2, xk's. You just obviously change the the, uh, the um, number here. Okay, so um, once we've done it for one, we have it for the general case. Okay, so remember what this means is if we have the whole probability space here, which is every possible outcome of this, um, then we're taking a subset of that, which is uh, the subset where the first uh, the first basket has got x1 in it. So every single outcome that's in this subset, let's say this subset here, this is the event that x1 is equal to little x1. So this is the event little x, big x1 is equal to little x1. And all the outcomes in here, there are lots of different outcomes. You know, here are all the k baskets, but they all of them, all of them have a common feature that in the first basket, there are x1 tennis balls. Okay, but in the other baskets, the way in which you share out the n minus x1 baskets varies. Okay, so those are all those outcomes. And what we are now saying is, we're just viewing this event now as being our probability space, so we're promoting it, if you like. It's going up and we're viewing it as our probability space. Uh, so, we now want the probability of this event that, um, that the x vector is equal to x1, x2, xk, given that x1 is equal to the little x1. So, that's saying, find this event, so this is this, this outcome here, this event outcome that you get x1, x2 all the way up to xk. That's an event, that is an outcome, sorry, in this event here. And we want to know if you put that in a set by itself and consider it an outcome, what is its probability? Now it has a probability considered when you consider this whole probability space, all possible outcomes of this experiment of throwing n tennis balls into the k baskets, uh, which is equal to the probability that x is equal to, you know, x1, x2, little x1 and little x2 all the way up to little xk, but we are now asking what's it, its probability in this new probability spa space, this smaller probability space, so it's going to be bumped up, and remember the formula for this is it's going to be equal to this old probability, uh, so the probability of this uh, event happening, so this this is, we're viewing this now as an event, remember all I'm saying now is put this outcome in a set by itself, consider that an event, we can ascribe it to probability, that's what this is here. Probability that this vector, and it shouldn't have that bit down there, uh, x1, x2, xk happens, and then what we need to do is scale it by dividing it by the probability that the overall event pink happens, which is the probability that x1 is equal to little x1. Okay, so 
we know uh, how what the probability. Well, firstly, we know what the. We'll start with the top bit. We know what the probability that x is equal to a certain combination is in this huge probability space. That's given by the multinomial PDF, a uh, PMF rather, multinomial probability mass function. So the probability that uh, this vector big X is equal to uh, little x one, little x two, all the way through to little x k. Uh, that is equal to um, well n factorial the Euler product i is equal to 1 uh, to um, to its to k uh, p i to the e to the power of x to the i x i and all over x i factorial okay so you can work that out there uh, so if I well you could work that out if I gave you the p vector and I gave you uh, the spe specific numbers x1 x2 all the way up through to x k Okay, and I obviously only would need to tell you what n is, but if I told you what all of these is, you would were you would know what n was. Okay, um, right now what we need to know is what is the probability that x big x one was equal to little x one. Well, that is the marginal PDF of this random variable big x one, and we calculated that in not the previous video, but the video before. We showed that this was binomially distributed n uh, choose x one uh, p one. Uh, to the power of x1 times uh, 1 minus p1 uh, to the power of n minus x1. Okay, uh, and I just want to add a little bit of uh, statement about that. Uh, that we calculated in that video, I calculated specifically the marginal PDF of x1. Of course, what I failed to say at the end of it is that that, that result generalizes to whichever of the um, random variables x1, x2 through xk you wanted to use. x1 was a specific example, but the process was exactly the same uh, for any of them. Uh, so if you wanted this to be the probability that xk is equal to little xk, you just replace the 1 with a k, basically, because uh, that that basket k is no different from basket 1, other than the fact that it's labelled 1 rather than k. Okay, uh, so now, basically, uh, we are in a position just to use the formula. The probability, let's say, okay, let's move this up, the probability, in fact, I want the, no, I want to keep it like that, so that this formula here is its own view. The probability that the vector big X is equal to this specific vector, little x1, little x2, through uh, little xk, given that big X1 is equal to little x1, is equal to, so now we firstly put this thing in, so we get n factorial times the Euler product uh, of pi to the power of xi, i is equal to 1 to k uh, over xi factorial, okay, and then all of that divided by n choose xi, okay, and uh, then um, then what finally, oh yes, what, uh, we're, we're dividing it by this thing here, so n choose xi, pi to the power of xi times 1 minus pi to the power of n minus xi. Okay, so let's write this thing out here and uh, hope that we might be able to find some places where this cancels. Okay, right, so let's go. Um, so uh, let's expand this thing out. So bring it up here now because all we need is this. Okay, um, so um, we've got this n factorial out the front. Now if we expand out the Euler product, we get p1 to the power of x1 over x1 factorial times p2 to the power of x2 over x2 factorial all the way along to p to the k, pk to the x to the of k uh, over xk factorial and then all of that is divided by this thing here so that's the expansion of this um, Euler product here and if we expand n choose xi it gives us n factorial over uh, n minus x um, oh, x i why is that x i it should have been x1 shouldn't it so this should be x1 here x1 p1 
one, one minus p one, n minus x one. It was a specific one there. Uh, of, obviously, we could have generalized it. We could have said we want it conditional on x j equaling little x j, in which case this would remain um, remain uh, more general. But uh, we were using a concrete example. So this is n minus x one factorial, x one factor, x one factorial like that. Um, p one to the power of x1 times 1 minus p1, which we could, if we wanted, write as p2 plus p3 all the way up to plus pk. I don't really see the point of doing that. And um, to the power of n minus x1, which again, we could write as um, x1 plus x2, uh, sorry, we could write as x2 plus x3 all the way up to plus xk. Um, do I see much of a point of doing that? Maybe, maybe there is a point of doing that. Um, it might give us a nice formula. So maybe we should consider doing that. Maybe write this m minus x1 as equaling x2 plus x3 plus all the way up to plus xk. Okay, um, because that might give us a nice formula. Okay, so firstly this p1x1 and this p1 to the power of x1 up there cancel basically. So um, how can I do this neatly? Um, Where's that blue pen? I'll do it in a different colour so that hopefully it might still... So I'm... Maybe I'll just circle the things that are going to cancel, uh, which are rather than cross them out. So that and that cancel. The n factorial here cancels with this n factorial here. The 1 over x1 factorial cancels with the 1 over x1 factorial there. Okay, so now this is overall going to come out as... Um, we're going to get the n minus x1 factorial out the front because when you it's underneath uh, and underneath it's in the denominator of a denominator so it's going to go up to the numerator it'll flip up uh, then uh, we're going to have um, so we'll have p2 to the power of x2 so starting with this bit here over over now we're going to split this up we're going to since we've got these, this 1 minus p1 to the power of x2 plus x3, we're going to write that as 1 minus uh, p1 to the power of x2 times 1 minus p1 to the power of x3, etc., all the way along to 1 minus p1 to the power of xk. You can't stop me doing that. Uh, and basically, I will then get that this p2 is over 1 minus p1 to the power of x2 uh, times x2 factorial. And then it will go on all the way along to p to the k to the power of x to the k, x to k rather, over uh, 1 minus p1 to the power of xk over xk factorial like that. So you'll get this Euler product like this. So we'll now rewrite this in terms of an Euler product. Okay, so I need a new piece of paper. Right. So let's try and finish this then. Okay. Right, there we go. Right, so this overall comes out, and I just want to make sure I've got this right. Yes, it looks right. Okay, so this overall is going to come out as you keep this n minus x1 factorial like that, and then you've got this um, this Euler product, i is equal to, it will go this time from 2 uh, to k of uh, p2 to the power of x2, Oh, actually no. That, oh, that's um, let's instead write that p2 over 1 minus p1 to the power of x2 uh, over 1 over x2 factorial like that. Uh, oh dear, wait a second. I I should have generalised that. Obviously, I shouldn't have left it as two. I should have had the i. So it will be i. So that it would have been x2, and then it's that for all the other ones from 2 to k. So it's going to be that in general. So this, if we write out what n minus x1 is, it gives us that it's x2 plus x3 plus all the way up to um, x to the k factorial because n is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3 all the way up to plus xk. So if we just take off the x1, we get this bit here times the Euler product, i is equal to 2 to k. And then what we've got is uh, pi over now what we'll do is write 1 minus p1 as p2 plus p3 
plus all the way up to PK, because again, uh, if you add P1 to P2 to P3 to PK, you get 1. So if you take 1 uh, and subtract off P1, you get all of the others added together. And that to the power of Xi over 1 over Xi factorial. And you will notice that that is the PMF of a new multinomial distribution, basically, that um, this, this conditional probability is multinomially distributed itself, where the new n is uh, x2 plus x3 plus all the way up to xk. So you take the old n and you subtract off x1. So this is the new n. So if we like, um, let's call that n bar. So the multinomial distribution... Oh, so, sorry. Uh, yes, no, that's right. Sorry, that's fine. Multinomial distribution. Uh, the new n is n bar. The new k, you don't have... Um, k terms anymore, you only have k minus 1 because you haven't, you've got rid of this uh, first term, so you've got k minus 1 baskets now, and their probabilities, the p vector has changed slightly, so we'll call that p bar, and the way p bar, so if you take pi bar, then the way it's related to pi is that it's pi divided by uh, p2 plus p3 plus all the way up to pk, and that is uh, going to be how it's um, how it's distributed now. It's going to be multinomial distributed with this new n bar, which is just um, the original n, take away the number that were uh, going to be ascribed to the first basket. So basically, that is the answer to how uh, to the way in which uh, this um, this uh, probability space is distributed. It's distributed multinomially still. So basically, if you take conditional probabilities on uh, multinomial distributions, uh, you get another uh, distribution which is going to be multinomial.